Hi, I'm Josh from Simple Thought Productions, and today I wanted to go over our delay broadcast uh, workflow and share that with you all to show how we do a delayed broadcast with the ability to edit out uh, content on the fly if needed. Um, we get that kind of request uh, when we do corporate events most commonly, uh, where they have concerns if they're going to do a live Q&A session or if we're doing, uh, you know, comments from the public at a city council meeting where somebody may go up to the hot mic and say something inappropriate. Uh, they don't want that to go out onto the public uh, broadcast channels. So in this particular setup, we still have the in initial recording left intact of what happened live, um, effectively like an ISO recording. However, the broadcast going out after the delay is the one that gets the editing. So. If something is wrong, we still have all the original footage. Uh, we can show what happened, plus the extra recording of what we did edit, and it works out nicely. So for this example, uh, we're only going to be using two inputs, but this works with as many inputs as you need. And then those are configured here. And then we have a clean feed in the review feed. Clean feed is basically a confidence monitor showing you what is currently going out to the delay broadcast and that's on ME4. And then review feed allows you to see what's actually playing back inside of that uh, delay feed. So if you wanted to visually wait for something to happen, you can watch it here. And then once it occurs, you can then turn off the dump feature basically. Uh, so that visually allows you to see it. We also will mute the audio so that it can't go through but we'll solo it so that way if you're listening to a pair of headphones and there was something that was said that was inappropriate, you can actually listen to the delay only and that won't be going out to broadcast. And then once you hear the words go past it and you know everything's okay, you can turn the dump off again. Uh, so you can monitor via visual or audio with this setup. On the input configuration, uh, there is a little bit of work that we need to do uh, to make all this happen. So all the inputs to the TriCaster in terms of audio, um, just like normally you wanna have everything going to master. However, you do wanna pick an aux bus that is going to be used for that delay feed. So in other words, you want to be able to turn off the audio for the delay feed uh, when needed uh, without impacting anything else. So the way we do that is we set everything into the master because that's what's going to be the core recording is all of the audio as you wanna mix it. And then the only thing you want to put into one of those auxes, and you can use any of them, I chose aux 3, is the DDR2 in this case, uh, which I have routed to aux 3. So right now I'm in sensor mode, uh, so this is muted, but I am soloing it so I could hear it. So that's how that's, uh, the audio is set up to make sure that happens. And then I have in graphics 2, I have a lovely little uh, graphic here from The Simpsons, uh, which is what we throw up. Obviously, you could use any graphic. You could put this in a buffer if you wanted, uh, but I just went ahead and used graphics too because it was easy. So the last part of the setup is under the output. Uh, mix 1 is programmed with master audio, which is pretty standard. However, mix 2, we're going to make the clean feed, which is ME4, which is where we're doing the switching uh, for the clean feed and the delay, and then aux 3. That way, this mix 2 is what you'd want to configure in your encoder, or if you have a hardware encoder external to the TriCaster, in this particular setup, I would connect it to mix 2 to get that delay feed. And then, finally, uh, if we go look up the last uh, kind of safety feature I have, I have extended play turned on. That way, if somebody accidentally punches to DDR2, which is the delay feed, you don't really want to put the delay feed back into the main feed. You would then suddenly see a loop an additional 10 seconds later, uh, which is no good. Um, but if you do that on accident and then suddenly cut off, you still want that delay feed to keep running. Uh, so if it goes to program and then comes off, the TriCaster is going to say, we'll stop the playback normally. By turning on extended play, that shouldn't happen. That way, if you do accidentally bring it to air and take it off, you know, a second or two later, it's not going to cause you any grief other than the fact that you took the wrong thing to air. So finally, let's take a look at the macros. Um, this is pretty straightforward and there's only three of them. Start delay is effectively when we're going to start a broadcast with the delay. Uh, we turn this on, it turns on recording. It goes to DDR2, and again, DDR2 
is what's going to be doing all of the work uh, for the delay feed. So DDR2 is going to be in use. You're not going to be able to use that for other clips. That's what DDR1 is for on the TC1. If you got a VMC or TC2, then you've got four of those suckers and you can do a lot more. But in this particular case, DDR2 is going to be dedicated to the delay feed playback. So we start the recording. In this particular case, I'm using a 10 second delay, so roughly 600 frames. Um, and you can change that to whatever you need. However, I don't recommend going lower than 10 seconds uh, because it is effectively reusing a growing file. And I have seen some instances where anything lower than 10 seconds, sometimes the system doesn't update in time to see that the file has grown and it can stop playback momentarily or just stop in general. And that's no good. So 10 seconds or longer is what I recommend. And uh, I'll kind of show you visually, sometimes longer than 10 seconds can be a little less distracting at times. Um, so we add the clip after 600 frames, 10 seconds, and we clear the in and the out point because again, we don't want to start at the time of the replay where it was called. We want to play back from the beginning. So we'll have that 10 second delay. Uh, I press stop twice to make sure that we reset to the beginning of the clip. Um, that we just called and then we start playback after a brief delay. So effectively that kicks the show off inside of DDR2, which is our review feed. After that, it's really simple. Do we want to perform a dump or turn it off? So uh, dump enable is pretty straightforward. Uh, again, we're using ME4 for this and we specifically will call uh, the graphics too uh, when we want to turn on dump. We will then solo DDR2 and we turn off master if that's enabled uh, for soloing and then we mute DDR2 that way it no longer goes out to mix to so the end users can no longer hear. So effectively we've gone to our standby graphic and we've turned off audio. In this macro you could do a whole lot more. You could start playback in your sound channel to give it some music or something else. Uh, you could turn on a different input into AUX3. Uh, there's a lot of things you could do if you need to, and it's pretty straightforward. You just modify this as you need. In our particular case, we just throw up the graphic and we go to silence uh, for this example. When we want to disable the dump, um, we basically perform the inverse. We put on a row on mix uh, ME4 DDR2, we put it back. We turn off the solo and we turn off the mute. And at that point, audio will go back. So it's really just bouncing between those once we start up. And then at the end of the show, uh, we just turn everything off as normal. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. If I go ahead and I have this map to my X keys for easy usage, and I definitely recommend that. That way, if you need to operate this as the TD, it's pretty straightforward and you can do that. However, if not, you know, you can assign these to different buttons to a different control surface and hand that to somebody who's strictly just listening on the headphones and watching the feed to know whether or not, you know, things are going well and or if they need to uh, edit anything on the fly. So let's go ahead and take a look. So if I fire up, uh, we saw recording starts. And then after about 10 seconds, we're going to see the clip appear and we're going to see it clear the endpoints and start back to play, start playback. Okay, so playback is started and we saw it cleared out the endpoints. So now we have this and we're playing back. And then as we get near, we saw it clip back because it's just basically gonna keep growing. Now this is the part I was talking about when we do 10 seconds, you see the bar goes yellow, then it goes red, then it goes back. And basically as the clip grows and it gets near, this is just the TriCaster's default thing to let you know, hey, the playback of your clip's about to end and it clips back. Um, Sometimes I do find that a little bit annoying and usually because I'm not going to do anything else with DDR2, I'll just click over to the graphics so I don't see it constantly changing. Another option is, is that if you give it more time, it will refresh before it gets to the end of the file and you should stay in the blue uh, so you don't see it changing colors all the time on you. Usually 15 seconds will take care of that. But effectively, we now have a broadcast of uh, the delay feed going out on DDR2, um, however, Clean feed shows that we're currently uh, dump enabled, uh, so nothing's really going out on the broadcast, but we are playing it back. So let's go ahead and uh, turn the broadcast on, which is basically dump disable. And we can see now our clean feed matches our review feed and all is well. And if we come over to our audio mixer, we can see 
aux 3 is getting the audio playback from there. And uh, we have all the audio going through and everything's great. So let's say I accidentally cut on program this graphic and oops, I did not want that. Oh, okay, I took it off. And, but now it's in the broadcast, I'm about 10 seconds behind. I can now go ahead and dump, which shows clean feed has now been dumped. I still get to watch, but we see it's muted gray bars. There's the footage I didn't want to show, and now it's gone. I can turn, disable the dump, and now it's back to a clean feed, and the audio came back. And if we come over to our audio mixer, we can see that happen in real time again. If I just go ahead and call for a dump, we see that we cut to the graphic, the audio mutes. I still get to listen to what's going on, and then once we get past it, I go ahead and turn it back off. So audio, we still get to listen to. Visually, even though we get a confidence monitor to let us know that the outside world is no longer seeing what we wanted, uh, what we wanted to hide from them, uh, and now we still get to visually see it. So this allows you to fairly quickly just kind of on off button, if you will, uh, go through a delay feed and this way you don't have to record a broadcast and then post it after the fact if you have to edit it. Uh, this allows you to go on the fly. And then Inadvertently, if you do have some sort of issue or mistake, uh, like I said, we're recording the program feed and we're not doing anything to the program feed. If you go look at the program feed, you will see that cut that was made. That was a mistake. You will still have the original audio. You will see the broadcast as it quote unquote originally was edited. However, when you go to the uh, record of the delay feed, on mix two, that one will show the edits that you made. So you still have an ISO of the program, as well as if you turn on ISO recording for all the individual feeds, you can truly go back as a multi-cam edit and go absolutely nuts. Uh, but this is kind of the best of both worlds where locally you get everything that you need, and then online you only send out the content that you want. So hopefully you found this interesting. If you have any questions, let me know. I will post the macros. Uh, to my website, which will be a link down in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and ask. Hopefully, uh, you'll be able to put this to use and it will help you out and make your next event a little bit easier to pull off.